Praise God. Well, you know what? It's, uh, we're optimistic. It's exciting. Whenever something new is happening in, in our lives, uh, it's exciting. We've entered a new year, and I pray that this is going to be a great year for all of us. Uh, whatever happens, uh, the good or the not so good, I would encourage you as myself and everybody I talk to to stand on the promises of God. Amen? No matter what happens, good news or bad news, to stand on the promises of God, that uh, he's with us no matter what. Amen? All things work together for good that those are love God, and we love him. So all things will work together for good for him. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen? As we sang earlier, and if God is for us, who can be against us? And so we, we, uh, I encourage you to stand on the promises of God. You might not be feeling 100% today, but stand on the promises of God. Lord, you said you're going to be with me. You won't leave me. You won't forsake me. Lord, you said that you will strengthen me. When I'm weak, you will strengthen me. Stand on the promises of God and, and, and keep reciting them and repeating them and let the, the word of God minister to you and me. Amen? So I would encourage you to do that in this new coming year. I've entitled uh, this morning's message, The New and the Old, all right? The New and the Old. How many of you this morning feel like you're new? Show of hands. We got one, two, all right. How many of you feel like you're old? All right, we got a lot of hands here, a lot of hands. Thanks for being honest. Thanks for being honest. How many of you like getting brand new gifts? Anybody? Anybody? A lot of hands all over the place. How many like getting older gifts? Anybody? I got a couple of hands there. How many don't care if they're new or old? They just like getting gifts. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. Well, listen, there's, there's, there's value in the new, but there's value in the old. You know, there's, there's, uh, there's probably so, some of you got some antiques at home that are worth some pretty penny. Steve's here this morning. He's got a 1928 Model A. That thing's beautiful. That thing's uh, worth some, uh, you know, nice money. And uh, Dave, I don't know if Dave's here today. I love that 46 Chevy that he's got. There's some value in the old. That's, that's for sure. But most people see more value in the new than the old. And, and that's okay. That's okay. But I want to talk about the new and the old today, Okay. And so Parkwood, as we're uh, entering this year and celebrating 100 years of church ministry, praise God, that we embrace the new, but we don't forget about the old. We don't forget about the old. So point number one, if you, uh, if you want to take any notes, if you're a note taker this morning, uh, number one this morning, the new and old in us. I want to talk about the new and old in us. Uh, how many know that God wants to do something new in us? Amen? He, wants to, he doesn't want us to stay where you are. You feel content right now. You feel pretty comfortable right now in your seat and in church. But God doesn't want you to stay there. He wants to do something new in you. And he wants to grow us and sometimes stretch us <laughs> to our limits. And so oh, uh, if you want to open up your Bibles or just uh, follow off uh, on the screen to 2 Corinthians 5.17. You know, and what's really cool, how many uh, have the uh, version Bible apps on your phones? But, uh, some of you? You follow that every morning? What was really encouraging to me, even though that I started preparing for this a couple weeks ago, that's the verse that's for today. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5.17 for today. Okay, Lord, you're, you're, uh, you're working something here. Okay, and uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, say in Christ, in Christ. he is a new creature. Say new creature. And the old things, say old things, have passed away, and behold, new things have come. And this is what God wants to do in all of us. He wants to do something new. And uh, he wants us uh, to have a new a heart, a new, new uh, mind. Uh, he wants to do many new things in us. And so in this verse here, it starts off with a therefore. And you've heard this from this place before. Whenever 
uh, you, you, you read the word therefore, we need to look back and see why is it therefore. And so as just going back into uh, chapter 5 and chapter 4 in 2 Corinthians, we see Paul's explaining that, that Jesus' death on the cross and that he died for all. Praise God. Every single one of us. And because the grave couldn't hold him, amen, he rose again victorious on the third day. And because of our faith in Jesus Christ, we rise to new life in him today and every day we choose to live in him. And no longer for ourselves, but for him, for Jesus. So this is what the, the context is, is that now we are a new creation created in Christ Jesus' image to live for him and not for ourselves. <laughs> I don't know about you, uh, church, but I need to be reminded of that every single day. Mike, it's not about you. <laughs> it's not about you. It's never been about you. It's about Jesus and what he's accomplished. Amen? And so, uh, therefore, if you've accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, if you call yourself a, a Christian, you are a new creation. You're a new creature. And the old selfish desires, the old Mike, the old you, it needs to pass away. It needs to pass away. And God will give us new desires and a new self, that's for sure. Uh, Psalm 51.10, when we are reconciled, that means when we're uh, made right with God, he creates in us a, new, a right spirit. Uh, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. When we're reconciled with God, he creates in us a new heart. And, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit, and I will put within you, and you will remove that heart of stone from your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. So God will come and remove that heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. We can find that in Ezekiel 36, 26. In Romans 12, 2, when we're made right with God, and we accept him and we invite him into our lives, that he comes and he transforms our mind. It says here, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what the, God's will is and his good, pleasing, perfect will. Amen? So God wants to do some work in me and in you uh, when we come to him, when we call to him, when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. Ephesians 4, to 24 says, Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt throughout deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self created after the likeness of God in the true righteousness and holiness. So again, Apostle Paul is, is, is showing us this is to put off this old self. It's like taking off your, 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 your garments, your, your old dirty clothes, and putting on the, the, the clean, righteous clothes that God is giving us through Christ Jesus. Amen? So he wants to give us a new heart, a new spirit, a new mind. And the old needs to pass away. Simply put, the old needs to die. It needs to die. And I thank God that he comes and he does that with his power, with his Holy Spirit. He needs to come and do that. It's so hard for us to do that. We can put it off, but he can put it to death. And, uh, you know, uh, some of you are going to understand this, but uh, um, I've shared this before. When, when I or you were in your godless life, <laughs> when we were serving Jesus, when we didn't know about him, when we didn't know about his word, we had all kinds of sinful desires. And the, the enemy put that before me, put that before you, and he gave us an appetite for it. The drinking, the smoking, the partying, the godless, the, the sin, all the sin, the corruption of the sin. He put that a, 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 like a plate uh, of, of, of food before me and you, and he gave us an appetite. We had an appetite in our sinful desire self to indulge in that. But when... I and you called out, God, help me. I don't want to live like this. I, I need you as my Savior. 
God comes and he, and he transforms us and he removes that heart of stone and he gives us a heart of flesh and he transforms our mind and he puts his spirit within us. And now he, he takes that sinful plate of uh, desires that we had before and he flipped it upside down. He flipped it upside down in my life. And now those were the things I detest. I don't want nothing to do with it. It's a miracle. How can that happen from one moment to have desires for it and have a craving for it to have now come to a moment where you, you hate it? You don't want to engage in it. That's a miracle of God that he can do in your life and he's done in my life. I, mean, I praise God for that. And so God wants to do these things, these new things in our life. Now this morning, uh, I'm just going to touch on this briefly, but if you're a Christian and you're a Christ follower and you still struggle in an area of sin, I would encourage you to keep reaching out to God for help. Uh, there will be some altar workers here uh, after the service that would love to pray with you. Call our church office. Get together with us, pastors. We'd love to uh, pray with you, and I pray that, that God would help you in that struggle in your life. But God wants to do something new in us, and the old needs to die, amen? So this is the new and old in us. Point number two this morning, that the new and old that is before us, the new, I want to talk about the new and the old that is before us, before me and before you. In, in Ephesians chapter 2, we read these words, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The Message Bible says it like this. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does. The work he has gotten ready for us to do. The work we better be doing. <laughs> I, love, I like that in Message Bible. So God is creating something new in you and me. And he's prepared, he's prepared a way and a place and a plan from long ago. And now we better be walking into that plan and that place and that plan that he has for our lives. So we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. That is the new before us uh, that God has prepared from long ago. And the Bible also tells us that God is the one that opens doors. How many believe that God is the, the way maker? Amen. He's done that in my life, and I believe that he's done that in your life many times. He's opened a door for you. Yeah, you. You needed a miracle, and God provided that miracle. Opened that door at the right time, at the right place, at the right moment. And when we read this in Revelation chapter 3. I know your deeds. See, I've placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have a little strength. Yet you have kept my word, and you have not denied my name. Praise God. So God is placing doors, opening doors before us that no man can shut. Praise God. And we need to have the faith to walk through those doors, to walk through those open doors that he has uh, put before us. Psalm 37, 23 says, The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. God is ordering the steps of the righteous. He's ordering by his spirit, I want you to move this way. I want you to pray for this person. I want you to help this uh, <clears throat> person or ministry. God is doing that uh, before us, and we need to be obedient uh, to what he's doing. Praise God. So he's the one that leads us. Let me take a little drink here. So the, the <clears throat> these are the, some of the new things that God is doing for you and for me. But he wants to keep, uh, he wants us to remind us and wants us not to forget about the old. Amen? As we had communion this morning, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. To do this, when, as often as you come together, to do this in remembrance of me. How many remember uh, Maybe growing up, you grew up on a farm, you had some type of well like this one with a, with a handle on it. Anybody? <clears throat> so
So some of you, or maybe your grandparents, or, <clears throat> or you remember having a well like that someplace around. I want to read to you um, this story about this man that was in the desert. There was a man lost in the desert. He was dying of thirst. In the distance, he, shot, he saw an old shack. Staggering through the door of the shack, he looked frantically for water. All he saw was a rusty old pump. He fell back in disappointment, and then he happened to see a dusty old jug beside that pump. He wiped off that jug, and he saw a note that read on that jug, you must prime the pump with all the water that is in this jug. P.S., be sure to fill the jug again before you leave for the next thirsty traveler. He popped open the cork, and sure enough, it was water, hot and stale, but water nonetheless. But he was dying of thirst. He had a decision to make. Should he drink it, or should he pour it into the pump? Reluctantly, he poured all the water into that pump, and he began to, to pump on that handle, up and down. And nothing was happening. And he was getting discouraged, and he pumped even harder. But then all of a sudden, he saw a trickle of water, a trickle of water coming from that pump. It was rusty, and, 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 but it was coming. And as he kept pumping, kept pumping, the water became clearer and clearer and clearer. Then he was able to fill the jug again, drink as much water as he wanted to, and refill that jug, like the note said. And then he added to that note, believe me, it works. <laughs> believe me, it works. You know, there's a, there's a message uh, in this story in this old story of this pump and of this water, and that message that was left on that, uh, that jug, that, you know, we have a responsibility for those that are coming up behind us to leave them something. And not just something, something very important, very instructional for life. We, we have a responsibility, and as church, as Parkwood, as we celebrate 100 years, praise God for that, that we celebrate that. But, you know, I, I look with anticipation for the next 100 years, if the Lord doesn't come back, that the, that the church is still strong and the church is still growing, amen? And, and, and we're doing what God has called us to do. And so, you know, uh, to leave something of worth, of extreme worth uh, that the next generation uh, can use and, and use for, for their lives. Amen? There's a, <clears throat> there's a, a mind-boggling verse in the Bible, and uh, most of you have probably read it. Maybe some of you haven't. But it's, it's, a, it's a powerful verse that I, I believe that the, uh, the Lord has put <clears throat> on, on my heart to share with you today. But in Judges chapter 2, verses 10, we read this. After the whole generation had been gathered, so af after this whole generation died to their ancestors, another generation grew up who neither knew the Lord or knew what the Lord had done. This is mind, a mind-boggling verse for me because, let's get, let me give you a little bit of context. Who is it talking about? Well, this, this Bible verse is talking about the Joshua generation. The Joshua generation. Remember Joshua from the Bible, from the Old Testament? The brave and mighty Joshua, the one, the one of the ten that goes into the, you know, the, the promised land and he comes back with a good report with Caleb. Yeah, we can take him down. The brave Joshua, the, the Joshua that was given the instructions to march around Jericho and, and the walls came down. The Joshua that was, uh, you know, given instructions to fight the, the, these battles for the Lord and, and win for the Lord's people and God's people. This is the context that Judges, Judges 2 is talking about. The Joshua generation. Mighty Joshua. 
And so another generation grows up behind Joshua that neither knows God or knows what he's done? How did that happen? How did that happen? Church, let it not be said of us. Amen? Let it not be said of us that we'd be a, a generation that, uh, that after we leave this planet, that another generation comes up after us that neither knows God or knows and remembers what he's done? Oh, boy. How can this, how can this tragedy be avoided? Well, you know, I praise God that this church has been preaching the gospel for 100 years, and I, and I believe strongly, and I know Pastor Danny believes that we need to keep preaching the gospel, amen? Keep preaching the gospel and sharing the gospel. It is, it is what we find salvation in. Church, we need to keep teaching the Bible, teaching the Bible, uh, teaching in our, in our homes, in our life groups, in our, in our kids' ministries, in our youth ministries, young adult ministries, we need to keep teaching the Bible. But not only teaching the Bible, but having others that are in our classes that we're teaching, let them start teaching the Bible. Amen? Have them start teaching. How do you know when a student is getting it? How do you know when a student is, is understanding it and is believing it? When they start teaching it. When they start sharing it. And so I encouraged all the life groups that represent in this room here today, have others in your life groups teach lessons. Give them chances that they, they can share and they can teach. Amen? And so we need to keep uh, uh, teaching the Word of God. But also we need to keep sharing the testimonies of what God has done. Amen? I know that there's testimonies th throughout this room all throughout this room, there's testimonies of what God has done. You need to keep sharing that with your family, with your friends, what God has done. How he provided for you. How he healed your body. How he saved you. How he delivered you. How he made a way when there was no way. We need to keep sharing the testimonies of what God has done in your life and in my life. Amen? So there wouldn't be a generation that comes up behind us that neither knows God or knows, doesn't remember what he's done? Oh, let that not be said of us, church. Let that not be said of us. And so we need help with this. Amen? I need help with this. <laughs> you need help with this. And who's going to help us with this? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Church, we need the Holy Spirit to come prompt us, to, to come and direct us, to give us the words to even share. You know, the Holy Spirit comes and, he, and, he, and, he'll, and he'll, he has the perfect time and he's got the perfect words for us to share if we're in tune with the Holy Spirit. And that's, I, I, there's, you know, uh, no greater uh, joy than I can have to share with you today to, as together as a church to be encourage one another. Let's seek the leading of the Holy Spirit today for this new year. Amen. 2023, you know, we need the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us. 2,000 years ago, Jesus instructed the believers, go and wait. Wait in Jerusalem for the promise. He will empower you. He will give you the strength and the boldness that you will need. In church, I believe that we need to continue in that, to keep looking and seeking the, the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen? Amen. Acts chapter 1, 8. Um, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the remotest part of the earth. Hallelujah. John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And bring to your remembrance all things I have said to you. <laughs> oh, church, we need the Holy Spirit to come and help us. To come and help us with the new and the old. The new and the old that he, he wants to do in my life, in your life. And the new and old we need to be bringing before us. That is before us. The new, embracing the new doors that God is opening up for us. Without fear. And remembering the things of old that he has done in my life and in your life. Praise God. 
You know, just like this uh, story, this old story of the well in the water. You know, some people believe that this, 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 this book is ancient and old and is out of date. But let me tell you this. Like this story of following the instructions, doing what the instructions have uh, told us to do, we will receive the water. We will receive the refreshing. <laughs> Same for this book, my friends. This morning, if we would just follow the instructions written in this book and believe them with all of our hearts and with all of our minds, the Lord has many promises for us. And he promised us that there'll be living water flowing <laughs> from us and into us by his spirit. And so this morning, I would encourage you as a church to embrace the new and the old that God is wanting to do in your life and in my life. And to ask and seek the strength of the Holy Spirit to help us with that. We need the Holy Spirit to help us with that. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me in prayer. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word to us today. That Lord, you are a God that wants to do new things. And you create a new mind and a new heart. And you put it in the right spirit within us. Thank you, Lord God, for the work of, of your spirit in our lives. And Lord, I pray that you would help each and every single one, one of us to make sure the old the old self, the old selfish desires, that they're dead, that they're, they're, they're dying, that they have been taken care of. Lord God, help us by your spirit to keep that old self in that place. And for that one that's struggling today, as a follower of Jesus Christ, struggling in the area of sinful desires and the old self always wanting to come back up, Lord, I pray for your resurrection power, for your resurrection strength to come over, Lord God, and, and, and strengthen that individual and all of us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That they wouldn't struggle in that area anymore today, Lord God, in this new year. And so, Lord God, also we embrace the new that you're putting before us, the open doors that you're placing before us. Lord, we're, give us the strength and boldness to walk through with courage with boldness, Lord God, for your plans and purposes. Lord, help us to re re remember and recite and teach the old things that you have done, Lord God, that there wouldn't be a generation that would come up after us that neither knows you nor knows the things that you have done. So help us to keep sharing testimonies, teaching your word, Lord God, and Lord God, teaching the generations behind us that you are a great and mighty God. Hallelujah. Lord God, would you do these things in this day, in this year for us, and we'll give you all the glory, all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. amen.